Good morning and apologies if you have been looking for us for a few minutes. Um, we've had some technical issues as of course it being a Monday in our first week back that was bound to happen wasn't it? So we were trying to stream via StreamYard for some reason it wasn't connecting to Facebook so I'm streaming straight from Facebook now. If anyone is watching us can see or hear us and is able to let us know that everything is coming through, that would be great. Hi, I can see somebody, thank goodness for that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was highly stressful. Um, but you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be technology triumphs if the technology didn't fail every now and then, did it? Um, so welcome back. We've been on a bit of a break through the summer. I know that we have a lot of new people joining us this week as well, which is awesome. Um, Pip here and my son Michael is here. Do you want to say hello? Hello. Hello. You've got to shout a bit louder because you're sitting further away from hello. me today. Um, oh, wicked. Everyone can hear. Sound is fine. Brilliant. Fantastic. So whilst we um, just I'll introduce us quickly, just to let you know, if you didn't have the resources, there is no right or wrong answer with how we do our artwork. So whatever resources you've got to hand is fine. I'm using watercolour pencils just because it's my preferred medium. And it's really useful if you've got a, a device to be able to view the image from, because obviously it allows you to enlarge as well. If you haven't, that's fine as well. If you've got a printout, if you haven't got that even, I'd recommend it for next time. But this time you could just follow along with what I'm doing. Loads of people saying hello. I'm, oh, I feel mad, bad now for not saying hello back to you individually. Um, hi, Phil, Claire, Tanya, Susie, Jill, Tom, Vicky. You get the idea. Awesome. So the way this goes is I'm going to show you how I would draw. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because there's, in my opinion, there's no right or wrong way to do artwork. It's all about enjoying it and finding your own sense of style. But you can get some tips um, from how I do it if you want to. You can go completely off on a tangent and do whatever you like because artwork is all about how you interpret things and most importantly, enjoying it. So I'm going to be using a standard HP pencil to begin with and that's to sketch the outline. I'm going to get started. Um, just because I realised that we've already lost a few minutes from my technical glitches. Um, I'm working on portrait this way because I, f I feel like that image allows for that. And we'll see how much we can get done today. I was kind of hoping that we could get a bit of the background in as well because the colours are quite nice because otherwise it's going to be quite a grey image. Um, Oscar is the here too and hello from Annie. Hello, awesome that you're all here. Wicked. We'll get started, shall we? Now, the, the big thing I find the trickiest when I'm drawing, and again, if you've been watching me live before, you know this, is just getting the placement right in the page. Sometimes I sort of end up cropping bits of the picture off. So I'm going to try and spend a bit of time just getting that right. And I'm going to start with the face as the focal point. So I'm just going to sketch out roughly his head shape and then his body shape. I'm saying he. Again, I'm making an assumption here. I don't know. I don't know what his gender is but I'm going to keep going with he so and these lovely big fluffy ears and as we're drawing today at some points when Michael breaks he's going to share some facts with us about the koala so we're not just drawing the koala we're learning a bit about them as a species as well so again um, regardless of whether you're new to us or whether you joined us last term we have put a different spin on it we're trying to give it a little bit more focus and structure we're going to be traveling the world this year with our artwork so we have started at the furthest point I could think of from us, and we are over in Australia, which is why we are starting with this awesome koala bear. And we are, in the next few weeks, just going to concentrate on animals that we find predominantly in, in Australia. They're actually not bears. They're actually not bears. Michael just wanted to chip that in straight away. Koalas are not actually bears. Do we know what they are classified as, Michael? Can you remember um, that word? Classified as... It does start with an M. Do you want me to help you out there? Marsupials. So like a kangaroo where they have pouches and their babies carry on developing in their pouches, kangaroos are... Kangaroos. Koala bears are actually marsupials. They're not bears. And they're most closely related to what other species that we find in Australia. Can you remember? No, not kangaroos. Uh, the jack wombats. 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 Also found in Australia. I'm going to start sketching in. So this is just really rough sketching. So I'm trying not to press too hard with a pencil because I want to be able to rub out some of these guidelines later. So I'm roughly sketching in the major shapes and then afterwards I can add the detail in. But if I just get this bit right first of all, it will make my life easier in the long run. So we've got that awesome funky looking nose we've got right in the middle. His eyes are only partially open. He's a sleepy koala. So we're going to put that in. And what we're going to try and do today is try and create 
some texture so especially where we've got these fluffy ears and we've got texture on the on the tree trunk as well that's what i really would like us to be our focus as we add shading in as we go along so i've got the main structure and actually as it goes to begin with that's for me because i haven't actually drawn i haven't drawn since our last draw along so i'm a bit out of practice a bit rusty um i think that's quite good starting point normally i've rubbed out something and started again a few times but if you have that's absolutely cool take your time you don't have to keep up with what i'm doing i know people set, tend to say i sketch quite quickly and um, but then i t i tend to spend a long time on the shading so you don't have to work to the same pace as me um this is just the pace i work when i'm roughly sketching i spend a bit more time on the details once i get theirs as well so i'm quite happy with that Thank you, Erica. That's so good. Oh, that's really kind of you to say. I'm going to rub out, just because I get my brain gets easily confused, I'm going to rub out some of these guidelines that I started with to begin with, just so that I haven't got too much on my page that will confuse my little brain. And then we can go in and add a little bit more detail. And see, so this is where it helps me, because I've got old, old lady eyes, um, I have to zoom in to see those details a bit clearer. So I'm going to start with the eyes. I think they're such an important focal point. Although his eyes are closed, I think they're an important detail to have. And you can see on his his left eye, so the right eye is where facing it, you can see just about a highlight in his eye. And I think having that highlight in where, so by highlight I mean the white space, um, I think it helps to add life to an image. So I'm going to make sure that's in. His other eye is almost completely closed. It's like he's winking, isn't it? And then go in and put a bit more detail into the nose because we can see some nostrils there as well. I'm going to sketch them in. I'm st struggling with the ham hands from Brooke. Do you know what hands are? I think on every drawing, hands, so especially with people, hands are really, really tricky to get right. So um, if <laughs> I do have some cheats. Um, you can just crop your image so that you don't show the hands if they're stressing you out that much. You could just focus on all the other bits. But it's good to practice things that are outside of our comfort zone. I'll come to that in a second because I find the hands quite tricky. Um, I'm going to just quickly sketch in the rest of his nose and then his bottom lip. Should we call that? Like his, like his chin you can see there. You're not rusty. It looks beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, see, this is why I love our draw-alongs. You're all t too kind. It's almost like he's grinning at us as well. You can just see the sort of shadows of his mouth. So let's focus on those art hands because they are tricky. I'm going to jump to the hands. This normally would be the last thing I draw just because I'd be putting it off because I know it's the trickiest thing. So we'll start with the fingers. They've always, he's always got like bulbous parts of his fingers. So the tips get wider. So try and put that in. And you can just see claws as well. They've got really good, strong claws to help them grip with their climbing onto trees. They've got two thumbs on each hand. Yeah, Michael's just shared a the fact they've got two thumbs on each hand. So they've got three fingers and then two thumbs on, on both hands. So four thumbs in, in total. And why is that, Michael? Uh, to help them grip. Help them grip onto the trees. Good design, really. It makes sense. So actually, you can see this on my image. If you look here, these are the two thumbs on that hand, which I did not realise until Michael did the research and told me. I would have clocked. I would have assumed that was a finger on the other hand, but it's not. It's the thumb on his right hand. And he's very far behind. And that middle finger. So he's got. No, you're not. No one's. Been, Michael just said he's very far behind. No one's behind you. All working at your own pace, and that's absolutely fine. So his middle finger is longer than the two fingers next to it. So I'm just going to make sure that is the same. And then you've got those claws. So again, lots of rough guidelines that are confusing my picture a bit. So I'm going to just rub them out. I'm using a putty rubber if you've not seen one of these before. It allows you to sort of shape it so you can get in and um, not rub out your entire picture. I'd recommend buying one of these if you're getting into your artwork. So that's that one. Now this one's going to be trickier. You can really see the length of those claws, can't you? For such a cute, cuddly looking animal, these claws look lethal. Never cuddle a koala. No? Never. Why? Because of the claws? Yeah, they're just dangerous. Well, I've got news for you, Michael. I've cuddled a koala. 
Mm -hmm. I went to Australia years ago before you were born and I did get to hold a... Uh, no, I didn't get to hold him, that's wrong. I think they, they're trying to discourage that. I stroked him, I touched his back, I think it was. And they are as fluffy as they look. See, my claws are not as accurate to the picture, so just as other people are str might struggle with features, so do I. Also, I'm Sam. Sorry, Sam. Mel has put, did you know that koalas poop up to 150 times a day? Yeah. That's a lot of time on the toilet. It was 160. Oh, my, well, close enough. Still a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of pooping. So I noticed there that my placement wasn't quite right because I can, couldn't see, I didn't have room to put a bit of his arm in, so I've just moved that branch over. My rabbit claws look like that. <laughs> right. So, back to the ears, get some more fluff in. I'm just going to sketch it rather lightly. And then I'm going to think about adding colour, because that's when I start to add shadow and tone as well, and it takes me a long time to get that in. But I think all the other features that I wanted are there. Let's just see the other rear leg in the background there as well. Okay, so we're going to use mostly greys, but also you can see on him he's got some pink in his nose and around his mouth, and he's got some sort of yellowy, browny colours around his rear where the white of his fur is as well. Oh, sorry, Sam, you said why? Sorry, because I think I was calling you Christine because I was reading it off of the um, Facebook profile. So I'm going to start adding colour, I'm going to start with the eye, and I'm using an almost black, I'd, I'd imagine, I mean we can't quite tell from this image, but I'd imagine there's a bit of brown in that eye, so I'm going to just assume that is the case, add a bit of brown, and then I might move my picture over so you can see a bit more clearly, um, go in with the darker tones, remembering to leave that little highlight part of the eye, it just makes it look a little bit more alive. If I show you. I don't think that's going to pick it up too well. You, see, you get the idea. And then I'm going to go in with the pink, because he's got a bit of pink around the eye, as well as around his nose. So add some pink tones. And with watercolours, you don't have to worry about too much about being accurate when, when you're putting the colour on the page, because we can adjust it with the water. So we're going to use, I'm going to use paintbrush and water once I'm happy with the colour on the page. I'm just going to mute out some of these lines because he's got a white chin. It's going to be difficult to get rid of that shade. So I'm just going to do that, add the pink, and then use a soft grey to sort of get the, um, the shadowing underneath, give the illusion of the white fur, because obviously I can't draw in white. So I have to be a bit creative with that. And then I'm going to get his nose done. It's almost like a velvety texture on his nose, isn't it? So again, try not to just block colour. So I can see the middle front part of his nose is the darkest part. So that's what I'm going to do with my grey. It's going to be darker there and around the edges of his nostrils. And then it's going to fade out to, to lighter. So I'm just pressing lighter with a pencil. There's a highlighted area there, so that's going to go even lighter. In fact, I've got a lighter grey I'm going to switch to. And then I'm going to use a darker colour to give that darker shadowy bit there. Mine looks terrifying. Yours looks terrifying? Yeah. Is it the smile? No, the claws. Oh, somebody else is sharing some facts. Koalas are basically the only animal that can eat eucalyptus leaves because the leaves are poisonous to basically every other animal. And they must get a lot of water from those leaves because what was the other fact that you found earlier, Michael, about, um, the, about the, uh, where their name originates from? Uh, from oh, so, so koala means no drink. 
because and that was originally from Australia. Yeah, because that's where they're from. Aboriginal, uh, probably. I mean, the and they they call it meant no drink. Well, they called it no drink because uh, they don't re they rarely drink. So they rarely drink water. So presumably they get most of their water from their diet. Um, so the meaning of the word koala is no drink. That's an interesting origin story. And they sleep about 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day? 18 hours. Nice. Like I was just born. Yeah. <laughs> Basically a teenager then. <laughs> <laughs> they sleep 18 hours a day. So they're quite slow moving, aren't they? Slow, slow moving. They're not bears. Quite slow, quite slow moving at marsupials. So presumably to conserve their energy as well. A female koala has a flat face and a male koala has a pointy out nose. Hmm. So what do we reckon? Do we reckon male or female looking female. at ours? I think male. I think looking at the photo image, it looks like his nose is pointing outwards. So as I'm going in with the fur, fur texture now, you'll notice that I'm, I'm placing the fur the direction that it would be growing. So my, my pencil lines are following the direction that the fur would grow to give that impression as well. Oh, and another few facts is they, a baby koala is called a joey, mm -hmm. and the joey is the size of a jelly bean. Oh, wow. So just like the kangaroos, they have the pouches that their babies are built, born into, very, very small, very fra uh, fragile and vulnerable, and they are born at the size of a jelly bean. <laughs> be easy to lose that, wouldn't it? Where do I put, I put my baby really, down somewhere, where do I put it? They go really small spaces, though. <laughs> So that's why obviously they need to stay in the pouch for long yeah. until they grow and develop because they'd just be too vulnerable, wouldn't they? Mine looks like it's a hot from a Halloween movie from Brooke. No, well, it's it's nearly Halloween, isn't it? Maybe that maybe that's what you intended. <laughs> it is Mal. Mel saying it's Mal. Yeah, I think he looks like a Mal. There's some pink in the ears as well that I've just spotted, so I'm going to bring the pink in again there. He does look like a teddy bear, doesn't he? He doesn't look quite real. The baby stays on their mum's back until they're able to care for themselves. They can even swim like a sloth. Yeah, Michael said that they, he did some research. They can swim like a sloth. Pretty cool. They live about 13 to 18 years in, the, in the wild, which is pretty good for a wild. Yeah, for small, yeah, so they live, what was it, 13 to 18 years 13 in the wild? 13 to 18 years, but that's an adult. So presumably in the captivity they might live a bit longer. Now something we did discover, unfortunately, is that in very recently they've been classed as an endangered species. 80% of their wild habitat has been destroyed. Wow, 80%. So that could be human intervention where we're destroying forests that they might live in. Um, fires, obviously we know that Australia had a... a some awful fires a couple of years ago, forest fires, so that destroys the habitats and might kill the ones that were already living there. Um, what were the other things? Oh, feral cats and dogs are responsible for killing them because they're slow moving. Obviously, if a cat or a dog goes after them, they can't get away very quickly. So unfortunately, in the last, I think, 2022, they were classified as um, yeah. vulnerable species now. Another one is... Koalas are nocturnal. They are nocturnal animals, yeah, they prefer to be awake at night and sleep during the day. Oh, here's another the female koalas stay together and the male koalas go off on their own. Ah, so the band together, the females, look after the babies together, I guess. Koalas sleep up to 18 hours a day, yeah, that was yeah, the one that yeah. you found, wasn't it? That's what I said, just like a teenager. So with this, his body fur, it looks, it looks almost curly to me, so I'm sort of doing that with my pencil rather than st stroke lines like up here on his face I'm kind of trying to create a different texture now by moving my pencil in a different way and again this is just me putting the basic colour down because I'm going to be using uh, watercolour pencils as well oh and they, they're born blind, deaf and blind but they're obviously if they're 
blind, they can't see anything, but they actually have a really good sense of smell. Okay, I don't know if you heard that, I don't know if you can hear, it's raining really hard <laughs> on the cabin roof now, so, um, but yeah, Michael was saying that they are born not only, to, not only the size of a jelly bean, but deaf and blind, so really, really vulnerable, but they've got a super sense of smell. Now, I would assume that that sense of smell is what helps them identify who their mum is, um, and where to find the milk, maybe, as well. Maybe that's why, maybe that's the why there's a baby. Do you think? That's why. I think he's just sleeping. He's doing some of that 18 hours sleep a day. Mm. Got disturbed by a photographer. <laughs> they don't live in social groups. Like yeah, animals. so they don't tend to pack together like other animals might. Which is quite sad for them. Well, they just like to live in isolation. Right, let's try and, I'm, I'm putting it off again. Let's try and tackle these claws and get them over and done with. <laughs> I'm going some black. I can see some brown as well, so I'm going to put some brown in there. And a much more sort of, uh, what's the word? Much more defined with my pen colour on these, so they're not fluffy. I want them to look like sharp and solid. So I'm being much more severe almost with the way I'm using the pencil. Their, their fur is quite light, it's not so dark, which is good. Like you don't yeah, you associate grey with a dark colour, but actually there's a lot of white in their fur, isn't there? Yeah. I think I should have put red in there. They can jump branch, branch to branch. I didn't know that. They I just assumed they climbed they, slowly. They actually can't jump that high, though. They no, can I can't. They don't look very agile, do they? No. They can only jump a few centimetres. They are very fast when they're climbing trees, yeah. So I imagine they scale up them quite quickly because that would be the way ha that they would get away from predators in the most part. Quite fun, just mm. Fascinating. If you are new to this draw along as well and you didn't know, this evening we'll put a post up on the main Facebook page and it will have a picture of my illustration. So it's from about 6 p.m. If you want to, you can post a picture of your picture as a comment, and um, as long as you do it before 9 p.m., I can give you some feedback. So I'll tell you what you've done really well and what I think you should focus on next time to improve your drawing skills. You don't have to do that, it's just an optional thing if you would like it. Really. Have we worked through all your facts, Michael? Might have to double check them. So they, oh, so they have fingerprints just like humans do. That's like I thought. That's I thought that was yeah. Because no, even humans don't have the same fingerprints. That's the no. point, isn't it? But um, I thought that was quite a fascinating fact. Um, cool, I would like to spend their time alone. Tend to be solitary. Out of interest, people, people, out of interest, anyone watching, can you hear Michael, right? Because he's sitting slightly further away from me today, and if it's too quiet, I might move him closer to the computer. Can you move him? Is that a theme? I'm going to get some of that yellow tone here. Underneath him. Oh, we're doing time. Eleven thirty. Not too bad. Not too bad. Definitely need some more grey on my picture, though. He's looking a little bit too white at the minute. Jill said yes, they can hear, so Fran and Minnie can hear you fine. Rebecca's got kittens, oh no. That must be hard work. We recently got a new addition. We've got a new puppy. 
That's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, Daisy, we're now inventing stories of koala thieves who police never captured because they assumed the culprit was a human. <laughs> yes, because of the fingerprinting. <laughs> I love, that would be an amazing concept for a creative story, actually. Make it happen. Vicky said, uh, Daisy said that you're a bit quiet, so I think next, next week we'll move okay, you. I'll, I'll shout louder. Yeah, shout louder. <laughs> and next week we'll move you a bit closer. Really. Yeah, and actually on the back, he must have sunlight coming from that direction because he's got lots of white highlights there. So I think he's darker here where his arms and legs are together. So this is, again, when, when you're drawing in a realism style, trying to get show the, the contrast between the tone, between light and dark. Although we know it's a one colour, it's grey, there's lots of different variations of that grey. So trying to show that in your picture is what will help make it look more realistic. Well, it's been rubbing out the um, pencil, the um, what's it called? Lead. Lead. Um, it's been going onto my rubber. Yeah. So you can see the clay. Uh, you can see. I'm gonna go in with some difference. dark greys, and then what I'm gonna do is put in the, the tree bark, and then try and I'm gonna try see if I've got time to get some of uh, the green background, just because I think it will make the image pop and look really nice with that br the bright colours in the background. Even if I don't copy what is on the photo, but just sort of make it up myself. And then I'm going to go in using, it's a grey black, it looks like black, but it's just, it's a grey black. Um, only because my black pencil now looks like this, there's not much left of it. Um, just to add in some darker tones, because again, like I just said, if you've got the variation in tone, that's, it really helps to make your image look more 3D and more realistic. So adding in some darker to go against the white contrast will help build depth to your picture and just make it look a little bit more alive and less like a flat image. You can see already, look at the difference between that side of his face and this side because it's created shadow and depth. Yours is so good. Thank you, Erica. You're so lovely. Um, six, week old six week old kittens, is that? Um, we've got, we've got an eight and a half. No, she is, she's nine weeks old tomorrow, our puppy. Oh, really? Yeah, that's gone quickly, is not it? We only picked her up last week, so. Massive, yeah, she gets <laughs> us up very early. Like having a newborn baby again. Just dogs. Hmm. And dogs are easier to handle. Well, than babies, oh. yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, just a bit of shadowing around the nose. How long have I been doing art for? Well, really, as soon as we start. Holding pencils, we're doing art, aren't we? Even in, even if um, even if you're not f sort of formally drawing things like this. So all my life, really, I've been I've always liked drawing. I go through periods of time where I I don't give myself time to practice art. So this is one of the reasons I love doing this draw along now because it's allowing me to come back to it. So there was a point that I hadn't drawn for years, and now now that I'm doing this draw along, it's making me do it. I'm setting time aside, and it's, I love it. It's so, it's really good, like, Especially it's a good way of relaxing, I think. With all the, all the yeah, being able to join in with other people with it is nice. Sharing it together, it becomes, I know it's virtual, but it's like a little social activity for us. And it's just, and it's true, like so many things, the more you practice with things, the better you get. I've done my koala, although my hand looks terrifying, it's like just broken a bone. Are you going to add in some green of your background, Michael, if you green. think you finish? Green. What breed is your puppy? Uh. She is a cross between a German Shepherd and a Czechoslovakian, say I'll say that again, Czechoslovakian wolf dog. So she's um, going to be a big dog. We've always had big dogs, um, but she, she's slightly different to what we're used to. So it's going to be, you know, we're going to, it's more that the, the her, if she has the, some of the chef, the wolf dog in terms of her attitude, she's going to be a little bit trickier to train. So we already already started on her. 
but she's quite a big puppy. <laughs> yeah. And in, I don't know if it's next term or the term after, we are, go, we are traveling to Europe on our draw alongs and we are looking at specifically chose Czechoslovakia because we knew we were getting this puppy and we are going to be drawing the Czechoslovakian wolf dog so we'll learn a bit more about them as well. Maybe she'll feature on the live. <laughs> Maybe we can introduce her yeah. to everyone. <laughs> oh, well done, Michael. Do you want me to show everyone where you're at at the moment? Or do you want to show at the end? I'm finishing it. I'm doing it then. Let me show at the end, okay. So it's shadowing under here. If you don't want to colour the whole entire like... I love duck dogs so much, Maya. Yes, we are we're dog people. Not everyone is, so, and that's you know, we respect that some people I mean I find some dogs <laughs> a little bit scary. Um not necessarily by breed, just if they're not particularly well trained. So I'm quite happy with how my little koala bear is looking. I might try and focus on getting the tree in now, just so I've got enough time to add the water. We might, we tend to try and run this for an hour. I might go slightly over today, as in, I know we was meant to start at 11, we didn't really officially start till nearly 10 past, so it might, yeah. might add on another 10 minutes, but if you've got other places you need to be or anything, then that's absolutely fine. The live will stay on for you to come back to. So if you want to come back and finish it off later because you've got another lesson to get to or anything like that, then don't worry. It will sit on our page for you to find. Hopefully I can get the StreamYard link fixed for next yeah. time. Because that's a bit of a pain. That was stressful. I'm going to try and create some texture here. So just putting in some stronger lines on the bark and not necessarily following the image very accurately at this point because I'm just if I'm honest I'm rushing <laughs> so I'm just using my imagination with this what I know a tree to look like and to feel like and try and add um, some of that texture in it's quite a reddish brown on the image so I'm going to maybe put some red tone in there as well and the branch is sitting on should look a bit darker because obviously his body is creating a bit of a shadow on the on the branch too. How long is the live on? As in afterwards, it stays on indefinitely. So unless Facebook glitches and deletes them, which we have had in the past, you should have access to it. But if you're interested in doing more of these, some of our past ones, as well as them being on our page for you to find if you look through for them, if you look at our website, www.technologytriumphs.co.uk, I did create little documents and put links to them on, on YouTube. So I've got some on there like domestic animals where we did pets, mythical creatures, jungle animals. So there's other ones on there if you wanted to do it. If you, you know, can't wait till next week and you want to carry on practicing your artwork in between, which I fully understand and encourage, um, then you can, you can find them on there. I'm so scared of dogs, even though they're my favourite animal. Oh, uh, do you know what? It's nice, though, that you can appreciate the animal, even if you wouldn't necessarily want one in your home. I think that's a nice trait in someone that they can still see beyond that, you know? I think I was, to be fair, I think before we had a pet dog when I was a child, I think I was scared of them. So we didn't get a dog till I was 10. And, um... But I was quite cautious, and, and rightly so. Any animals, especially ones with big teeth, you should be a bit cautious of them, shouldn't you? Right, where are we? Your koala is so good. Thank you. I'm sure yours are too, and if you want to share them with me later, like I say, please do so, because that's a nice, it's a nice way for me to spend my evening. So I'm just adding in some green just to put more colour on my page. It might be that I don't have time to use the watercolour aspect of this, but I could do it after after the live's finished anyway. And I just think it makes it a nicer piece of artwork if you've got a bit more colour on it. I'm not going to shade all of it, I'm just going to do one side.
Brooke says, I've got a dog and dog's my favourite animal, but I got attacked a few months ago. <gasps> so I still love them. I'm just really nervous. Oh my goodness. No, no wonder you're cautious of them. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you're okay now. That's terrifying. That is something I worry about. Mm. I'm getting achy. This is where I can tell I'm out of you, out of practice now because uh, my hands are starting to hurt. And if again, some of the darker pencil to create darker tones in the wood as well, especially here because of that shadowing. How long have I got? Oh, I've got, I'm not doing too bad. I think I've caught up pretty well. So, I might be at the point where we start adding water. I'm not happy with this part of his face, so I just want to work on that a bit. I think I haven't spent enough time adding darker tones there. So that part of the image just looks a bit flat to me. So I'm just going to add in some more detail. That looks a bit better. Maybe it's the eye. The eye wasn't dark enough. That's better. You know, sometimes you just need to sort of take a step back and look at your image and think, try and, you know, what, what's missing, what's not, what's not quite right. Sometimes, especially if you're working very close to your picture, if your face is really up close to your picture, sometimes it helps to just step back from it and have a look and sort of analyse what doesn't look quite right. What, needs a bit of extra work. Another really good trick for that, if you can't figure it out, your, your brain and your eyes get used to looking at your image a certain way. So sometimes you need to shake that up a little bit. So another good way of trying to figure out where your, work, your picture needs a bit of extra work is to actually hold it into a mirror and look at the reflection of it because that flip reversal bit, I don't know why, I don't, I don't know quite the science around it, but it, um, it seems to help. It seems to, and though for me, certainly, I can figure out what isn't quite right. Phil, do you like koalas? I do. I think they're, I think they're sweet animals. They're not my favourite animal, but I do think they're quite sweet. Right, now I'm going to go in with my paintbrushes and water um, to try and make this into a a painting. Michael's done his. Do you want to show yours? Yeah. So this is Michael's. Oh, I need to knock the whole glass of water over then. Nice work, Michael. I like the fact that you've put the green in as well. It just makes the picture pop, doesn't it? The, I put the green around the edges because otherwise if I just put it into the whole entire page, it would have took forever. Yeah, so you've created a little frame around yeah. them. Cool. You have to check your, um, blah, 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 blah. check your facts, see if you've missed any that you can share with us. So I'm just using a bit of water. So my paintbrush isn't really wet because I just I want to move and blend the pencil now. And in the same way that I was adding the fur in like a circular motion, I'm kind of doing the same thing with the paintbrush even because I want to create that same texture. Yeah, no, I've done anything. Er Erica said, wow, I love the face. Well done. Oh, How did it feel after... A couple of months off, really, wasn't it, Michael? It looks terrible. No, it doesn't look terrible. Why do we do this? Why do we critique in such a negative way? Right. I might need to move to a bigger paintbrush. See how I get on. So I, even when I do this, I'm still looking back at the reference image rather than just doing it from memory because my memory is not so good and also because we get used to or we, get, we just make assumptions oh I sh you know I assume it will look like that but actually when you look at the picture sometimes you see differences can we do like a flying squirrel well not I've got the whole of this year's yeah, no, is already like, oh. planned out but maybe next year so if you sense? haven't seen already we've already worked out where we are going around the world in terms of our animal studies. So are we doing a red panda? Red panda is on one of them because we're visiting China at some point. I know. So you can see you can see ahead for this term all the other events that are coming up for the for Australia, um, and then somewhere on our page I did put a post talking about showing which uh, 
which area of the world we're going to each term so you can see what's coming up. Christine, I'm saying that and I'm saying that now. Is that in relation to not thinking your work's very good? We are always our toughest critics because we have an idea in our head of how something is going to look and how we want it to look. And sometimes that doesn't come to life. And then we're, we're disappointed in, in the fact that that work isn't as good as what it is in our head. But to anybody else looking at it, they're, they're amazed. It's funny, isn't it? We all do it. I like, even me. I, I look at things and think, well, that's not how I wanted it to turn out. So, we, yeah, don't beat yourselves up, basically. Is it okay to submit a digital drawing later? Ooh, yes, please, Becky. If you're choosing to work in digital, that's awesome. I like, like that we've got variety in the way that we're tackling these challenges. Get this arm done. So I'm kind of rushing the body a little bit because I want to spend a bit more time on the face because of the details. I don't want to have to rush the face, so I'm just getting this done as quickly as I can. I used to think how to spell koala. I used to think you'd put a word in there. Koala. It does sound like there's a W yeah, there, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? It's so weird. But actually, it doesn't. Yeah, K O A L A. Someone's leaving. Someone's leaving. Bye, Mel. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you work later if you want. Don't have to, obviously. And maybe we'll see you next week when. I I think we're doing kangaroo next week. What? Oh, I think, cut from my memory. Well, that'd be easy because some of the facts probably be stolen by claws. There's, there's a few that are. So, another, another marsupial next week. Mm -hmm. And we've tried to, as well, based on your feedback, we have tried to include birds and insects for each term, which are not my favourite things to draw because they're tricky, but it's a good thing for us to work outside our comfort zone. Claire said she's done. Awesome. So have you have you added in a background? Are you putting in some leaves and details or are you just focusing on the koala? I know when we've um, done these drawing ones before, sometimes people have added in other things. You could maybe even add a baby koala, couldn't you? If you had time. You could add like a little jelly bean. A little jelly bean. <laughs> or if it was a mummy koala, it would be hanging on, onto her back. Catherine has to go as well. Thank you for joining us, Catherine. Oh, duckbill platypus is next. Thank you, Joe. So I got that wrong. Duckbill platypus next week. Very unusual one. Bye. Also, I didn't do it because I know I was going to get mad. Oh, well, maybe next time. Maybe you'll feel like you can join in next time. Oh, I've done the background too. Well done, Ed. Are you going to share it with us later on the post? It's nice as well because other people comment as well and give reactions to your work so it's nice to get feedback from lots of people and for any parents listening i'm a qualified dt and art teacher so that feedback can class as written feedback from a teacher if anyone is collecting evidence or anything like that Bye, Christine. I oh, know it's not Christine. I forgot. No, is it Sam? Was that one Sam? Hopefully, we'll see you next week. If you've done, you're welcome to hang out whilst I finish. I am doing it. Michael hasn't got a choice. He's stuck with me. I still <laughs> want to go outside. Yeah, it's raining really hard again now, so Especially you don't want to go back to the house because you'll get Especially drenched. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, that summer. Weekend is yeah, been obliterated, yeah. doesn't it? Thank you so much for this. We're loving it. Ah, oh, thank you, Daisy. I'm loving that you've joined us. I just, I'm just here to chat. <laughs> if you were after some more free provisions, we have got some more of those on our website as well. And we've got some more that are going up in the coming days as well. So we've got fit maths things on there. We're going to have book clubs on there. We've got creativity for mental well-being. We've also got careers information. So again, you can find all of that on our website page. Um, but that is continually growing. We're, me and Joe are already making plans about other 
free things that we're going to run. We've got special interest week coming up again in October, which is where we focus on a particular theme and topic. I'm not going to ruin the announcement as to what that is. We've been discussing what that's, but it's where we focus on a particular theme or topic and lots of crafts and activities around that. Choose a bit club. The book club's the best. Yeah. Oh, the book club will be happening, definitely. Too many people have requested that. Duckbill platypus, yay! <laughs> it's a, such a such a strange creature. It's fascinating. I can't wait to learn more about it. With these lives, do you do digital art? Now, I'm not actually a digital artist. I'd like to learn how to be, and it's something that maybe we could look at doing, maybe as a different provision where we learn along some, the, some techniques. Yeah, I've got the technology. It's just it's having the time to sit down and do it. But if that's what people want, maybe we can do that at some point as well. I think I'm done from Daisy. Well done, Daisy. Book club from Emily and Frey. I know you've requested it. You know, yep. So Joe um, is looking at running that. I'm assuming it's going to be Monster Donuts 2. Um, oh, nice. Thank you so much from Pia. The facts are already being shared. Awesome. Joe, I'm so interested. For the, uh, so excited for the new Special Interest Week and the next book club too. It's going to be brilliant. I'm quite really excited about this, especially that was a conversation we were having last night, actually. We never stopped, to be fair. It's always like, oh, what else can we do? Oh, we, oh, we can have this in. Yeah. I have fun with, like, some post-it notes out the side of my bed, just in case I wake up and I have an idea. That's a really good idea, Michael. Post-it notes at the side of your bed for any ideas that pop in your head. Normally when you're thinking, trying to get sleep, isn't it, mm -hmm. when these things happen? And, and then when you try, you try to get... Uh, you. So it looks like I am going to have time to do the tree and the background. The other thing I meant to say for anyone that was new, your picture isn't finished until you've signed it. So make sure you sign uh -huh. it at the bottom or normally at the bottom right is where most artists tend to sign. Oh. And then when you're a world famous artist, it will be worth lots of money and you'll be able to sell it as an original. <laughs> got to start somewhere mine is finished and thank you so much even though it didn't go so well it was very fun and that's the important thing and it's okay. even though you think it didn't go well I bet somebody else near you had said it would say it's gone amazingly well and also it still looks better than that plain piece of paper you start with at the beginning doesn't it bye people Michael from Erica so thank you again hopefully we'll see you next week and bye from Rebecca thank you for joining us I am just going to carry on finishing up um, just in case people were interested to see how I do this with the bark and then with the background colour. Notebook's probably better. What's that? Joe, so you a notebook. It's probably better. So then you have I need to buy a notebook. Thanks, Michael. Excellent idea. When you wake up in the middle of the night with a eureka moment, you can jot it down so that you don't forget it by the morning. Or just have a whiteboard. <laughs> a whiteboard in your bedroom. Yeah. You That's dedicated. Math problem or something. Where do we submit the picture? On this thread of the page. Good question, Julia. So on the page, not yet. So later this evening, uh, Joe normally puts a post up about 6pm and it'll be a, a photo of my koala that I'm drawing now. So you're looking for a picture of my koala and there in the comments, you post a comment with your photo and then I will come along at some point in the evening going through them all and writing you some written feedback. And... So long as uh, you get that done before 9pm, just because I have to have a shut off time before I go a bit crazy from staring at a screen for too long. <laughs> I can't always promise, if you, if you submit after that, I can't promise to come back to it because uh, um, we just get busy with other activities mostly. So that's the time I set aside for doing that feedback. This is probably the most, this, this slide is probably the most people we've had in this. Yeah, it's been busy today. people, a lot. And if you have enjoyed it, feel free to share share the information with other people. There, I mean, you know, it's not like you've had to sign up for anything or put your details anywhere or anything like that. It is genuinely a free provision that we've been running. Uh, I feel like it's been a year now. No, we just started this, I think it was last year we started. It was just going to be a fortnightly thing. And then we realised actually it was quite popular. So now it's become this planned Thing. Our next goal is 50 people. Is it? Is that your is goal it? that you're setting yourself yeah. <laughs> to join people. us? Your picture looks amazing. Thank you. I'm sure yours does too. But again, 
39 years of practice this is so don't I think we're all guilty of sort of comparing our artwork to other people's I've had young learners compare their uh, upload their artwork and I've gone oh my goodness they should be delivering these sessions they're incredible so it doesn't stop us from enjoying the artwork even if you think well mine's not as good as theirs or it's still fun and it's a nice relaxing for me it's a nice relaxing way to start our week I'm going to try and blend this out so that I have like a, I don't have a definite line of colour. I want it to look a bit more like faded out. Sorry, Michael. My, uh, my own line. Like, <laughs> no, 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 like, maybe like we do one animal each week and then I, like, facts on that animal. Well, that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I'm nearly done now. I'm just going to, so as I get, I start on the inside part with the, with the colour and then I spread it out I'm using circular motion again as well and then more water on my brush to fade it out a bit more hi from Ed hi Ed oh I like the little koala emoji oh, it must be nearly lunch time I'm getting yeah, peckish I'm now <laughs> Food always comes first. <laughs> Is there an age limit to, to the drawing? No. Absolutely not. We, I know that we have parents, grandparents join in, so anyone can join in. And you've got, I, I mean, oh, my Elliot, he's five, mm. he probably, he would join in with this live. I just can't, I can't trust him to be on our live. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be totally disruptive, so... Um, but yeah, there's no minimum, no maximum age. Artwork and being a, being an artist doesn't have an age limit. You can be whatever age, can't you? So I'm just going to sign mine. I always sign mine, Pip, and I always put the year. I put, I put them on the page there. And if I did want to spend more time on this, what I could do again with the black is going in and adding more detail and highlights. But actually, as a wasn't even an hour, was it? Because it was about 50 minutes. As a 50 minute sketch. After weeks of not doing a sketching, I'm quite pleased with that. I think he's quite cute. So, um, yeah, koala done. Next week's the duckbill platypus. Hopefully you can join us then. Feel free to share the information with any other families that you think might uh, enjoy it. Like I say, no minimum or maximum ages. It's for everyone to join in with. And it's just for us to have a bit of fun and develop our skills a bit as we go along. So um, this has been lovely. And I shall leave it there. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. Um, looks like the rain is here to stay now. That's it. Summer's done. But I quite like autumn as well. So quite excited for autumn. I like winter. And do feel free to share on our post later this evening. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the work you've done. Thank you for joining us. See you later.